Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. So uh, this year and really the last couple of years have actually been very, very big, especially in the League of Legends community for China. Uh, I mean, throughout most of the early existence of League of Legends, it was very Korean dominant. Um, we've seen some European teams have some success here and there, but but recently the LPL has been on a massive rise. They have an insane player base. They have a very dedicated player base. They, they play a fast, fun, exciting style. The popularity is increasing, which in turn uh, gets them more and more young people, more and more new players playing, and it just increases their talent base, increases their player pool. Um, and, you know, headed into this year's Worlds, the LPL, China are looking very, very scary once again. Um, they're also a, a place with a lot of money, so even if, if some Korean players start popping off, they're able to buy them out. They get great imports. They have great facilities. They have great infrastructure. Um, but the big news coming out today has a lot of people worried about the future of China, not only in League of Legends, but in all of esports, in all of gaming, which could be a massive hit to League of Legends growth and, and esports growth in general headed into the future. Some people are calling it an overreaction. Some people are, are saying, you know, maybe the people are underreacting. So that's what we're, what we're going to be talking about in this video today. Definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content and consider checking out my Patreon, patreon.com slash I am germ to stay up to date uh, on my podcast beyond the riff with I am germ, uh, which is live streamed every single Monday on YouTube. With that being said, let's get right into this because there are actually a lot of different people talking about this, giving a lot of different opinions. And uh, yeah, I, I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Uh, but first up, the news coming out, Carlos, he reacted, oh my god, a lot of people reacting, especially right when I woke up in the morning, um, things have started to cool down now a couple hours later, but uh, people are saying that this is a big deal, this article coming from BBC News UK, China cuts children's online gaming to one hour, and then here is the article, China cuts children's online gaming to one hour, uh, online gamers under the age of 18 will only be allowed to play for an hour on Fridays, weekends, and holidays china video china's video game regulator has said now obviously right off the bat this seems like a very very big deal my reaction and a lot of people's initial reaction was this could be a very very bad sign for for china in the long term obviously in the short term it shouldn't affect them too much players who are already professionals players who are already over 18 they're going to have full control they're going to be okay they're going to be fine but to be good two, three, four, five, ten years from now, you know, if we if we do think League of Legends Esports is going to be around for the long term, you're going to need that next generation of players. You're going to need those 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 uh, year olds to be grinding, to be playing, to getting to be getting better, to be, you know, really working their way up and all that. Um, so this would be really concerning because part of the reason of why China and the LPL is so good is they constantly have fresh new young talent that's cracked coming up and and their young players are better than than the young players from other regions and they just have a higher volume um, of young players and they also have 17 teams in their league and the only way to keep those rosters locked and loaded is to just have that constant influx of young but also talented and practiced players coming in so this is obviously uh you know something that got people really really concerned again Carlos is responding. Carlos is reacting. A lot of other people are talking about this. Um, some people are saying it's great news for the LEC. Some people are saying it's great news for Europe. Now, Europe can be world champions in two, three, four, five years. You know, who knows? But again, uh, I think China being good really helps the overall League of Legends scene because obviously esports are very, very big over in the East. Obviously, China is an absolutely massive, massive market to tap into, not only in terms of just numbers, you know, population, people, eyeballs, but also in terms of money, uh, you know, we do have this meme here, like, okay, now we're winning Worlds in 2022, no doubt, with the G2 Hopium guy, um, but some people on the other side are saying a lot of people are overreacting to this news, like, obviously here, G2 Nelson, uh, a guy who's lived in China, uh, or at least, you know, knows a lot about China and stuff, who says this is actually barely going to affect the pro scene. Now, um, there have been some other people that have said this as well, Kelsey Moser uh, has come out and said this, uh, my only problem is, okay, great, you're, you're just saying it's not going to affect the pro scene, but no one has really dove into it very deep, and I'm trying to find out the reasons why they think this, or why they know this, or whatever. I don't really think they know. I think at the end of the day, they're just giving out their opinions. People ask, they say, what does this ruling actually do then? Honest question, because articles like this have been coming out for quite a while, and I never know what's true and false, and Nelson doesn't really give a good response. He says it affects those who are not aiming to be pro, playing games um, which are not popular globally, and people who play more casual games or MMOs. And he doesn't say why. You know, he doesn't explain how, what that has to do with the rule. I mean, that, that literally, that sentence, to me at least, seems 
almost unrelated to, to anything. Um, and they're asking him, and then this guy even says, could you explain why? And he said, pros have Riot accounts and usually train on the Korean servers anyway. And again, that does not answer the question that people are ha having um, because we're not worried about pro players. We're not worried about the people who are already professionals. One, most of them are 18 years old. Two, they're already professionals. We're talking about the next generation of players. And there is obviously, uh, you know, some things that they can still do because people are saying, yes, they can go play on the Korean server. Um, they are saying that, you know, once they get signed to professional teams, they'll be able to, uh, you know, just continue to play and stuff because these rules are not going to be locked in as hard on people who are actually professional players, signed to teams, signed to orgs. Um, but also, the big thing is that a lot of players and a lot of kids just use their parents uh, like IDs or accounts or whatever or they just use uh, you know somebody they know somebody that's 18 they use their information their IDs whatever um, and, and that's how a lot of people have been able to get around these rules that not rules this stringent have been in place but similar rules have been in place and you know it hasn't stopped China it hasn't stopped the LPL it hasn't stopped the League of Legends players uh, so far so so why would these new rules so I, I get what Nelson is saying but I just don't think he does a very good job of of like letting us know what he's saying. I don't know if it's a language barrier or uh, if he just, you know, is really just kind of not understanding what people are saying or what people are asking or whatever. Um, but again, he's not the only one saying this. Kelsey Mose are saying the same thing. I see some other people saying it. Some people are saying, oh my God, this is huge news. This is a big deal. China, the LPL, they're done, which I think is an overreaction. And then I think there's some people saying, oh, it's not going to affect the pro scene at all. I think that's an underreaction. Like most things, I think the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Um, obviously, some people this will affect. China is also claiming, uh, I believe they say in the article, that they are going to crack down a little bit harder. They're going to go a little bit harder on the video game developers and, and these video game creators to make sure that these rules are actually being enforced. Because again, yes, you can have all the rules in place, but if you're not actually enforcing them, then that's when it's not actually going to affect the pro scene. But again, just because China is saying that they're going to crack down harder, just because they're saying they're, these rules are going to be, you know, uh, applied more strongly or enforced more heavily or whatever, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But either way, I just thought this was very, very interesting news coming out. Um, you never really know exactly what China's going to do. It, it seems like video games are, are under their microscope and stuff recently. Um, so at the least, it's a scary. Um, either way, if this does stay in place for a long period of time, again, I think we would see more of the effects two, three, five years down the line. So I don't expect this to have an immediate impact or anything like that. But it will be interesting to see how people are able to get around these rules, if they are able to get around these rules, and if China ever starts handing out punishments or starts cracking down on video game companies or the players or the kids or the parents or whatever, for doing stuff like this because it seems like you know they keep putting out more strict and more strict and more strict rules and people just kind of keep ignoring them uh so who knows what is coming next but i think at the very least this is very very interesting china cracking down on gaming um could be bad for the lpl could be bad for china uh, again maybe it'll be good for the west but again i think if, if china gets hurt overall i think that's bad for the esports scene i think the lec the lcs all that they want to beat china by being better than them, not by, you know, having the games taken away from them, because that would mean less viewership, that would mean less money, that would mean one of the biggest markets in the world is not as involved, uh, and that wouldn't be good for anybody. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Let me drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate it so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this whole situation. Do you think this story matters, doesn't matter? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.